Welcome to my year in review video for 2021. So without any further ado, let's go straight into January. On January 13th, we received Bone and Fairy Island Natural Rares and Epics. And along with this release, we also saw the release of the Star Rocks for these islands. The Star Rocks, to me, weren't specifically the best designs that I've seen for the Star Rocks. I think they did much better with the Ethereal and Sugarbush Island Star Rocks that released later on. They suited the islands so much better than these ones. However, the Rares and Epics, I do think were a lovely release and specifically with this release I really like how they had to jammer stand up now I know this was a glitch but it's just so funny to me that I have to point it out on January 21st we got prismatic boscus afterward and with prismatic boscus they went with the dragon vibe they've got webbed feet and wings on them and we saw in the teaser boscus getting some lip balm and I think with these prismatics you can tell that the lips are quite highlighted inside of these designs I wouldn't say these are the best designs out of the year, but they are really good designs and a nice addition nevertheless. Then on February, on February 3rd, we got Prismatic Quarister, and these designs I absolutely adore. They took the idea of royalty and gave Quarister some armor and a crown on their orange design and different garments to suit the idea of them being a knight across their other designs, and I think it really suits Quarister quite well, that theme. And specifically with this one, I really love the teaser that we got for them. We got them being on a tricycle rolling forward towards the prism gate and I really like that idea as I think it's a very unique one. On February 10th we then got Epic Ghast and update 3.0.4 and oh my goodness do I love Epic Ghast. This design is phenomenal. I really like how they put a spine inside of it and bones. I think that aspect to it is the most interesting aspect behind Epic Ghast. Overall though they just did so well with Epic Ghast. It really suits the introduction of the Epic Ethereals this one more so than any other variant class that I've ever seen. I just think that this release was just so perfect for the introduction of a class and therefore I've got to give lots of props to Epic Gas for that. No wonder though that their release was quite anticipated either though as we've been waiting for the next variant for months at that point and it was quite an anticipated event this one for Epic Gas to be revealed at the time as we weren't sure what variant class was going to be revealed. Now we know as we know now that lots of variant classes did end up being released throughout 2021 as indeed it was the year of the monster but <laughs> getting Epic Ethereals at the time was something that I don't think anyone was quite expecting and I don't think anyone at all was expecting for another variant class to be released alongside that straight after it as we're going to get into but it was a very interesting idea and I do really like the idea that they've gone forward with with the variant classes now. We also got update 3.0.4 at this point and I do think that this update was very integral. I really like the trailer behind it. It introduced costumes amongst all of the islands in game a very much needed addition for the Colosseum. If we're looking at the Colosseum beforehand there was just nothing tied it to the rest of the game and therefore it made it a very isolated experience and because of that I think the Colosseum just fell out of place at the time and even though it's supposed to be considered as an additional piece of content you've got to integrate it into the game in some form I do think to maintain that balance and a sense of structure inside of the game so the Colosseum doesn't feel out of place and the costumes are naturally very nice too and I love seeing them all across the islands it's a very good idea I do think and one that is executed really well in game. On February 24th, we saw Rare Pheromine then, and this was the introduction of Rare Magicals now into the game too. Not even a month. No, two weeks after Epic Gas, we got Rare Pheromine, and let me tell you, I love Rare Pheromine. I like how they're based off Frankenstein. It's a very simple design, but it's executed really well. I don't think anyone was expecting Rare Magicals to be released at the time, and when that teaser dropped for Rare Pheromine, where it showed their head, oh my goodness, I feel like it set off low loads of fire alarms in the community where everyone was just like what on earth is going on heading over to march we then proceeded to get prismatic Souza, who featured loads of creatures for their instrument instead on the back of them they didn't really change amongst all of the prismatic forms which i would have liked to have seen a bit more i do think however it was interesting to see the different forms that prismatic Souza did take then on march 12th we got the fandemonium debut the debut of the show that we've been waiting for for years at that point ever since 2000 2016. So that is a really long time there. Maybe it was 2017. Don't quote me on that one. This show wasn't something that really appealed to me, but I know it appeals to so many people in the community. It was a time where the community had a chance to interact with the monster world and Rising New Monsters in a way they hadn't done before. And I feel like it was just such a good part of the year. And even though it didn't turn out to be those singing monsters and those singing monsters is indeed cancelled now, it has turned out to be. I think this was such a good show and it did have a good run. However, for me, I think 
think my biggest drawback for this would have to be how teasers were brought about inside of Pandemonium. It really did take away from releases, I do feel like. Getting to see the entire body of the monster and their idol animation before they'd release, I just think wasn't the best of ideas. I think teasers execute the idea a lot more well in the fact that they hide away aspects behind the monsters. And it would have been nice to, I think, see teasers in replacement of seeing the entire body of the monster. I think that would have been a much better idea. But nevertheless, it was a wonderful experience. And then on March 17th, as revealed on Fandemonium, we got Epic Gainer. And this was the introduction of the Epic Fire Elementals in-game. And as if we didn't already have two variant classes, they went ahead and added another one. And it could not be better, as now you never know what to expect with releases. And I think it's something that everyone really likes, as that surprise behind the monsters now really gets shared. You don't know what class to expect next, or what monster to expect. And overall, I'll really like Epic Gainer's design too. I think I like the rare variant a little bit more, but I really like Epic Gainer too. On March 24th, we got Prismatic Shelby, and this is my favourite Prismatic design out of all of the Prismatics that we got this year, I would say. Actually, I think it's tied between two of the designs, as we will get on to later, but Prismatic Shelby's design, I think, is one of the coolest designs that we did get this year, nevertheless. We got planets all around them, and the stars. This astronomy-based idea that they take on with some Prismatics, I think, is when prismatics just exceed for me. On March 26, we got the teaser for the Sanctum. This Fandemonium episode where this teaser was shown was an absolutely wacky time for the game. Seeing this teaser was absolutely mind-blowing. It had so much attention to detail inside of it, the lore inside of it, everything inside of this teaser had so much love and care put into it. It truly is an exceptional teaser. Even though it's just a single image, there's so much to take away from it. You can honestly sit there and analyze it for ages. There's so much inside of it. And the fact that they went ahead and expanded on the law with this teaser and introduced us to another place inside of the pocket dimension with the Ethereal Meadows where this is actually set inside of, I think is an absolutely fabulous idea. And I've not seen a teaser like this at all ever. And I think this is the best teaser flat out that we've ever had for anything ever. And therefore I feel like it's a very momentous thing to include inside of this year in review video. On March 31st, we then got the magical Sanctum trail. Not even a week following the teaser, we straight ahead went into the trailer. And let me tell you guys, this trailer was the best trailer I have ever seen in my Singing Monsters history. This trailer had exceptional animations and the way it led into the Sanctum's release was truly flawless. It captivated on the build-up of the Magical Islands and brought about the Sanctum by highlighting upon the introduction of all the Magical Islands that we'd seen throughout the game's history. And honestly, it was such a momentous occasion all of the magicals coming together and come into a place where they could all be together. It truly is a magical experience. And getting to see the law too with Blabbit at the very beginning and the introduction of the Sanctum via Ghast, I think was just such a good idea and introduced a story element to the game. And we don't really get a lot of story, I don't think, in present day My Singing Monsters. It's much more so in Dawn of Fire and that kind of thing where we get it. So getting a bit of story now, I thought was very interesting. And I really hope that they do go into this idea a little more in the future. Moving on, on April 7th, we got the Magical Sanctum. This was the biggest release throughout the entire year. The Sanctum is it. If you're going to say what 2021 was, it was the Sanctum. We got all of the single element magicals on the Sanctum and Zista, Frondley, and Knuckle Hedge. And these monsters were absolutely breathtaking. Their introduction to the Sanctum brought about a dark, eerie vibe at the time. It wasn't even like anything it is now. It was completely different. If you listen to the song back then, it just seems like it went in a completely different direction in such a good way, yet still maintaining the elements and the car design behind the Sanctum that was laid out back on April 7th. And I think that the designs for these monsters are executed so well. I think Frondly, I've got to mention them, was the star of the show here. The surprise element where their hair just flows up in the air was absolutely unexpected. And you've got to say, I don't think anyone saw that come in. Lots of people were predicting, including me, that they were going to make noises through their toes, and that certainly was not the case. What a breathtaking experience 
well that these monsters are. They are an absolute integral part behind the Sanctum, and what a wonderful choice of monsters too to release at the very beginning. On April 14th, not even a long time at all since the Sanctum's release, we then got Deja Jin. I don't think Deja Jin plays the most immense part on the Sanctum. I think the monsters steadily got better and better and better as monsters kept debuting throughout the Sanctum, which I really love about the release of the Sanctum, is it kept that momentum going throughout the Sanctum's release, and I think it gave it a very well fitting ending and made it even more hype towards the end, which I really do appreciate and hope that we see with future island releases too. We saw between releases of monsters to them going from instrumental to vocalist, and I think that was a very essential part behind the monsters releasing here too, that really did lead its way into a very good, astounding release for the Sanctum, and I do think that the Sanctum's release was executed so well in a way that we've never seen behind the game, and I really do hope that they maintain that level of quality with the release schedule behind islands in the future. And then on April 14th, quite a while away since Epic Kana, but an absolutely lovely addition, and honestly, I think this really did come to show us at this time, we cannot expect any more anything from variants at all, <laughs> because they're just going to pull them out of the bag out of nowhere from this point on. On April 25th, we got Prismatic Waddle and Dawn of Fire then, and with Prismatic Waddle, they took a more tech vibe. We've seen a mechanical vibe before with Prismatic Stog, however, this one was much more tech-based, and I really do like the eye and I absolutely do think of pixel all when you look at this, <laughs> as everyone probably does with yellow prismatic waddle and all of the prismatic waddles. I think they are magnificent designs, the prismatic waddles, and a testament towards the amazing designs that we got for prismatics throughout 2021. Then on April 28th, we got Larvelous, Marvelous, Larvelous, and their design I think is lovely. They've got a caterpillar take to them, and their hop goes so well with Zista's instrument and brings about more tension towards the sanctum in a lovely manner. Over on May 5th, we got Prismatic Clamble, and luckily at this time, this was the mark here, Prismatic Clamble. The point where we didn't get any teasers for monsters after this point was, was lovely, as I love getting to experience them in game, as I think that brings about more joy and hype towards monsters' releases rather than showing them before on Fandomonium a week earlier. Though with this one, I love the teaser you saw them putting their instrument down on the Space Island tree and just wandering off into the prism <laughs> And they look like they are based on Frogs, which is a unique concept. One more I'm sure Flog would love indeed. On May 12th, we got Kahoot then. A lovely addition to the Sanctum yet again. I really do love Kahoot. Their caterpillar spacey look is one to be remembered for sure. On May 12th, we then got Epic Waddle. And with their release, we got a lovely funny teaser where they put their legs up above the water, all of the waddles, and then Epic Waddle was teased inside of that. I think it was a lovely release. And you've got to say too that Epic Waddle's design is is so, so good. I think the epic fire of elementals really do take the variants out of their league entirely. I mean, this epic fire elemental class, what is amounted to this year, has been absolutely exceptional. And it's got me so excited towards epic releases. Come on, epic wallaby, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> on May 19th, we got prismatic more then. And then on May 26th, we got Mushaboom. Mushaboom marked the beginning of the Sanctum, just going completely off the chart from this point onwards. Mushaboom brought about so much to the Sanctum song, so much tension, so much love and care, and at this point, this is when you could tell that the Sanctum was going to amount to something very special indeed. Mushaboom's sound is such an integral part, even though at the time their sound was actually different to what it is today, <laughs> I think it still brought about so much to the Sanctum. That's actually a very interesting point there. I've not really listened to the two sounds in depth, but I do think the new one was what it was supposed to be. So at the time, even though Mushaboom's sound was different, you could just tell the amount of fan service and love and everything that the Sanctum was about to build towards. You could just tell, even though Mushaboom wasn't quite on there at this point. On May 26, we also got Rare Gobligod, who just came out flat out of nowhere. I think no one was really expecting Rare Gobligod to come along this early. Getting Rare Gobligod at this point was so <laughs> unexpected. The teaser debuted the day before, and you gotta say, this was out of nowhere. 
no way. Debut in a rare seasonal before their seasonal event is something that I don't think we'll ever see again. So props to you, Rare Gobbly God. I don't think this release would really capture any other monster's personality as well as Gobbly God's, <laughs> would it? Then on June 2nd, we got Prismatic Thrumble. This is also my next favourite Prismatic design. I'm looking at it now, and I've got to say this is my favourite Prismatic design throughout the year. Prismatic Thrumble. It doesn't even look like Thrumble anymore. You've got the Planets vibe again, which Shelby took on. This vibe, I love. I want to see it more in Prismatic designs, as I just think that it takes them so far, and I really love them very much. The Prismatics that do take it on. All the different planets are just so cool. Then on June 9th, we got Urstax. And Urstax is so spectacular, as they bring about a lovely vocal sound to the song, and I love their animation. The way that they were able to portray Urstax is just so impressive. There's no other way to put it. The way that they animate the monsters overall doesn't really let them go about 3D space that well, and the fact that they were able to put it off with Urstax is a real testament towards how far the designers have come behind the game. The animation behind Urstax as well is just absolutely incredible, and I really love Urstax's sound. On June 9th, we then got Rare Banjo on the exact same day. As always, with releases now, we do seem to get variants alongside the releases of monsters, so of course we got Rare Banjo at the time. I'm sure this will speak out to Attack on Titan fans a lot, although I've not watched the show yet, so I can't really speak on that too much. On June 17th, we then got Prismatic Bogart and Icons, and the Icons, oh, they are so much better than the old ones. If we're looking at the old ones compared to the new ones here, they are so, so much better, and it really brings about a lot more charm towards Dawn of Fire that wasn't there previously in Prismatic Bogart 2. Lovely design based on Ant. On June 23rd, we got Gadezos! Oh, Gade. Gadezos is what I call them, so we're going with Gadezos. Now, Gade, oh my goodness, I love Gade. They're one of my new favourites alongside Tapricorn and Wallaby, and of course, Pechidna. I love Gade a lot. I just love how they're a part of the Gabroods. I love the Gabroods name. I love Gade and how the hair floats back inside of their animation and their sound overall. And also, this was the day when the Sanctum Secret Verse was revealed. This verse took the Sanctum far beyond anything anyone was expecting. I mean, yeah, we did work out that it was there earlier, but hearing it in the song officially was such a momentous occasion, as lots of people were anticipating the Secret Verse, the final verse inside of the Magical Sanctum song, and getting to hear it alongside the new monster was absolutely exceptional. Good day. I love you very dearly. <laughs> and then on June 23rd, we got Epic Stog from there. A lovely design yet again, and I do think they went really out of the park with this one, as they added a new component onto Epic Stog, something that we don't really get too often with Epics, and something that I really do love, and definitely something that was a throwback towards the Prismatic Stog design. On June 23rd, we also, also, yes guys, there's even more content, I know, I can't believe it, but we also got update 3.2. In update 3.2, we saw the Book of Monsters get a much needed update, where now it's just so much easier to see which monsters in your collection you don't have, which makes monster getting just so much easier. I can't believe that this wasn't a feature in the first place, to be honest, it makes life so much easier when you're a new player. When I started out on Steam, seeing monsters like this was so much better. I really can't express that enough. And the mythicals getting the volume increased at the time was truly momentous. And even the new costumes and being able to breed them was something that was cool too. Overall, just that day was so phenomenally good. I personally think that was the best day for me out of all of 2021. And I love June a lot. However, I've got to say, moving on to July, July was my favourite month out of all of 2021. On June 7th, we got Rorik. Where do I even start with this one? Rorik, our wonderful secret verse lover. Rorik only plays in the secret verse, as you guys know, and I think that brings about so much specialness to Rorik's contribution to the song, as it makes the secret verse even more special, and it takes it places that I honestly didn't think that we were going. Having a vocalist just speak like this and be in game was absolutely amazing and I love Rorik's designs a bit. I love them probably too much. <laughs> On July 7th, we also got Rare Gob alongside Rorik. A lovely addition also. I've got to say I love good old Gobby, as I call them. And seeing their Rare variant was a very, very lovely experience alongside Rorik, which 
which just made the experience even better. And then on July 15th, we got Prismatic Edamimi, which was based on Scarecrows. And on July 21st, we then got Enchantling and the Sanctum awakening <laughs> oh my goodness i don't even know where to begin i was saying that for rory but with enchantling oh my goodness where do i even start the sanctum illuminating upon enchantling's arrival and them bringing about this huge momentous occasion yet again me using that word momentous but truly well and truly this year has been nothing but enchantling brought about so much to the sanctum song i said it with Mushy Boom, but Enchantling. Oh, you've got to say, Enchantling is just it. That is the Sanctum. Their overall addition is what the Sanctum was. It's what it stands for. And seeing their contribution was truly something marvellous. And the island itself awakening was something we've never seen before. And it's truly a unique concept that brings about such a marvellous end to the magicals that cannot be replicated. And I love this day so much for the game. And you've got to say, it doesn't even end there. As also on July 21st, we got the Summer Song trailer, which introduced Enchantling and gave us a ton to look at and tons of teasers for what was about to come. As we got a teaser for the seasonal shanty inside of that, with the amount of seasonals that they placed inside of it. But not only that, we got a teaser towards Sugarbush Island Epics coming along, which was a very surprising teaser indeed. And there was just so much love inside of that trailer. The amount of care inside of it. The trailers this year have truly been exceptional and I cannot express that enough. Enough. The Sanctum's trailer was great, yes, but this one was, was also very special, and I really do love it a lot. On July 28th, we got Prismatic Fog, and then moving swiftly onward onto August, we got on August 4th the Sugarbush Island Epics, which were teased. The first addition to Sugarbush Island we had seen in eons, literally eons. We'd not seen it be updated since the edition of Res back in 2014-15, and that was absolutely eons ago. <laughs> so seeing this update after six years of Sugarbush Island not being updated was very, very momentous. I mean, sure, we did get the Star Ox earlier in the year when the Season of Love was happening, but these were just so special as Sugarbush Island hadn't been updated in so long and the way that they were teased was truly special. They knew what they were doing with these Sugarbush Island epics and it was a lovely conclusion to Sugarbush Island, as I have no doubt that I don't think it will be updated again, Sugarbush Island, so it's left its mark in a very good place. I do think Sugarbush Island at the moment with these epics and I do love that Sugarbush Island got some love this year. On August 11th, we then got Prismatic Octopus with lovely aquatic designs. Very befitting of Party Island and the water alongside it. I think that they really went ahead and went, okay, Octopus is on Party Island. Let's just go all out with the aquaticness of the island itself with this one, which I think is very befitting and something perhaps that we could explore with other Prismatics in the future, hopefully. On August 13th, two days after, we also saw another Dawn of Fire update as we saw the Dawn of Fire Hotel upgrades, which, thank goodness, came along. <laughs> At this point, I was getting tremendously worried as Prismatics were releasing tons and tons by the tons, and then all of a sudden this update came out of nowhere, just in his games, not even an update, just allowing us to upgrade as castles. At the time, I was really worried as Prismatics were releasing, and I just didn't have the room for new Prismatics, so getting this update was really much needed, and I really do love that they included it right before Anniversary Month as which sure did need it before then. On August 18th, we got Epic Zigurab, and I think this is my favorite Epic Fire Elemental. No, what am I saying? Of course it is. Epic Zigurab, their Castlevania vibe. I'm saying Castlevania. I don't even know what Castlevania is, to be honest. But their castle vibe and the vines that slip down them are a lovely concept. And the claws, just overall, this design was took even further. And I think this is, yet again, a testament towards how far designs can come with variants and it excites me tenfold towards what is going to come in the future from variants. Really do love Epic Zigurab. On August 31st, we got the Shanty trailer and by far the best part of this trailer, you've got to say it, it was the collect all button. <laughs> so much love and care was put into this trailer, well and truly. I love the in real life elements to it and everything about it, everything coming together and showing us finally what the seasonals 
Wales do when they aren't on the islands was a request that has been made for as long as anyone can remember. And it's a concept that is very exciting and no doubt will take us through 2022 too. The amount of suspense inside of the trailer though when that collect all button was revealed I don't think anything <laughs> can beat that. <laughs> well at least it will be very hard to beat that I do think. Besides that we also got to our box on Ethel Island. We were teased earlier in the year back when the season of love event was happening towards something else coming towards Ethel Island so seeing finally what that meant was very groundbreaking. However I've got to say putting all of my rare Ethel's inside of rare war box which I've been collecting for years <laughs> wasn't the best of experiences but nevertheless it was an absolutely amazing addition and I take no regrets in it and I absolutely love how they entered towards epic war box inside of that trailer. I don't think anyone saw epic war box being teased inside of that trailer as being an actual thing so <laughs> they hit that really well inside of the trailer. On September 1st we got the collect all button and I have wrote on here finally after all these years put that meme on MPG because it's well deserved. <laughs> We'd been waiting for a collect all button literally since forever and finally getting it in game was absolutely amazing. I'm gonna put a clip on now of me clicking that button for the first time. <gasps> Everything. You can see the amount of joy on my face right there. I honestly think this was the best feature for me in 2021. Without this button, the amount of time that we'd have to spend in this game would be just so humongous. And with all the islands releasing, it's just inevitable that this had to become a thing. And I am truly so grateful for this feature. It truly makes the game so much more enjoyable. Also on September 1st, we got the seasonal shanty. With the seasonal shanty, it was just remarkable to see all the seasonals come together together and I think it was lovely to finally show some love towards Gobbly God. I think that was my favourite part about the seasonal shanty. Being able to finally show some love towards Gobbly God and their sound finally being a good addition to the song was something that I loved about the seasonal shanty. I'm excited to see where the seasonal shanty goes. At the moment I think it's very bare bones the song so I'm, I'm really excited towards 2022 so we can see some expansion towards the seasonal shanty. Also on September 1st maybe in September 1st, a very, very big day for the game, just to like to end a day release. We got Rare War Box on Ethel Island. I really love Rare War Box. We also got, the day before the September 1st, the reveal towards what Rare War Box said. Finally! <laughs> We've been waiting to see what Rare War Box said in their lyrics for so long and getting to see that was really good. I really like their File Not Found lyrics inside of Ethel Island and I think it's a very befitting addition to Ethel Island's song. On September 5th, we got Prismatic's Scopes, and then on September 10th, we got Prismatic Kongol with some very aquatic designs yet again, based around fogs, it looks like, to go along with fog again. <laughs> and then on September 15th, we got Prismatic Pango, a lovely cute design. If you're looking at all of the Prismatic Pangos, they're all just so phenomenally cute, and the little handkerchiefs, they really put a lot of time into Prismatic Pango's design, and you can really tell that it really does shine through with Prismatic Pango. I really hope that we get something like to them again as honestly this release was very exciting. And then on September 22nd we got Epic War Box out of nowhere. I don't think many people saw Epic War Box coming. There was lots of talk at the time towards the War Box update being released. However, I don't think anyone quite would have guessed towards Epic War Box's release being quite as unexpected as it was. It just flat out came out of nowhere. They released it with no teaser, no indication. There was just a live stream that went on and then straight away it was in game. It was so momentous. Again, I'm using that word so much, but that is what this year is. It is the year of the monster as it's been proclaimed ever since the Sanctum's release and it truly is a very remarkable year and it has lived up to the hype, I do think. Epic Wobox is a lovely addition to Plant Island. Seeing how Wobox has changed throughout the islands is something I'm excited for and Plant Island's Epic Wobox is so great. It brings about so much to Plant Island that honestly I never thought it ever needed the Plant Island song but seeing their addition makes it so obvious now what Plant Island might have been missing before. The Epic Wobox has 
these are going to be truly remarkable additions to each island that they do come on to and it's very exciting because of that. Epic Robox's design on Planet Island really befits the island itself and excites me immensely whenever I see it in game. Also on September 22nd with the partnering release that we see with each one we saw Epic Rebro. Epic Rebro yet again a lovely Epic Ephraim design. The Epic Ephraims are my favourite variant class they are turning out to be so far. The electric vibe to it and the Dawn of Fire reference towards its technology inside of its bio is something that I really do like. And overall, I love Epic Rebro to bits. And on September 26th, we also got Prismatic Yelmo. Now, you might have noticed that I didn't have enough room for September. There was that many things released in September that I couldn't possibly put them on the timeline, so I had to make two, you might have noticed. <laughs> prismatic Yelmo is pretty much your standard Prismatic, I would say. They've got a shell on top of them and some horns. But other than that, I think it's just standard kind of prismatic this one isn't it with the extra arms and such over on october 13th we got the spootical trailer for 2021 where unfortunately things did take a slide now this is a point where eric did leave who was in charge of the trailers and we saw a massive decline in quality in the spootical trailer unfortunately inside of the trailer the monsters were very bouncy and it just didn't have the same amount of love and care put into it as other trailers which I found very unfortunate. Now, I wasn't expecting for the trailers to degrade as much as what they did in between Spooks Close trailer and Anniversary Mom. Sure, we did hear about Eric leaving, but I wasn't expecting such a decline. I was sure that surely they would have gone about making sure that trailers wouldn't decline in quality. However, I've got to say, Spooks Close trailer just wasn't quite it for me. And I do hope that they do manage to improve trailer quality as trailers really do amount towards the amount of hype that we do experience in game and the events that do happen so they are very important and therefore I hope that they do manage to sort that out. But the Halloween costumes that we did get were lovely. Getting to see the costumes that we hadn't seen for absolutely ages was a very nice thing indeed and getting to purchase them any time around was lovely. Obviously you got to purchase them in Spooktical but being able to put them on I mean throughout all the year is a lovely thing indeed. Then on October 27th we got Claw the Vera. <laughs> a nice addition indeed. I have got to say though I am sorry for the negative claims that it just seems like it's October where it's all up, doesn't it? All the negative <laughs> remarks. But for Clavivira, it really did make me feel as though the shanty felt a little out of place. When Clavivira released, it seemed as though to me the shanty wasn't where the seasonals were supposed to go at first. Having the seasonals release on the shanty before the magical islands and every island that they are going to be on felt very out of place to me. And with with the shanty introducing them, it just doesn't feel like it's as much of a groundbreaking release as what it could have been if they were placed onto the original islands at first rather than being placed onto the shanty at first. I personally do think that it probably would have been better to have released them on the islands that they are on as well as the shanty upon their release as getting to see the islands be decorated is truly what makes a seasonal be a seasonal and I feel like that mark was missed with these seasonal seasonal releases that we are going to get now. But nevertheless, I am very excited to see Clavivira on Burn Island next year. And it's just very unfortunate that we do have to wait a year from now for that. Hopefully, it will be worth the wait, though. And I am excited, regardless, to see how Burn Island is decorated for the Beat Hereafter event, as I am so excited for that. Just liked how I was when Clavivira was about to be released. Perhaps the disappointment that I felt with Clavivira could have been avoided if it was made clear that the new seasonals were going to be exclusive to the shanty beforehand and then go to the islands but honestly I'm not sure I feel like it would have been better just to release them on the islands rather than the seasonal shanty at first maybe the shanty would have been a better thing for next year but nevertheless let's move onward on to October 27th along with Clavivira we saw Rare Yuggler. Rare Yuggler features the playground balls that were featured inside of playground and overall was honestly a big promotion towards playground when you think about it but I do like the throwback to as its original concept art inside of its design. Then on November 9th, we got Playground, and unfortunately, I've got to say, Playground just didn't quite hit the mark for me. I found with Playground that the game wasn't quite as jam-packed as what I would have liked it to have been. After my half an hour playthrough, I didn't feel any need to go back to play it again. The content wasn't quite there. It felt like there wasn't any reason for me to go back, so unfortunately, I have not been back to 
playground but nevertheless i think playground is lovely the graphics inside of it are spectacular and the amount of detail that was put into it and truly the fact that this was made by big blue bubble at all is something that has got to be mentioned as this game was so impressive in the graphics but the graphics are the best part behind playground seeing monsters in hg it truly is a lovely experience even though it may be a very short one on november 10th we then got playground and thanksgiving costumes and i'm sorry but i've got to say it again the content inside of october and november was so not very well balanced you could tell that they were heading towards playground's release and they were really putting everything into playgrounds however i think that really had an impact on the game at this point we were just seeing costumes at the time we had costumes in october costumes in november costumes in december it didn't feel like we were getting much else at the time while these were lovely costumes i've got to say unfortunately it wasn't really amounting to much as i feel like costumes are subsidiary content towards the big kind of releases with monsters and things i don't feel like the costumes really amount to as much as what monsters do and i don't feel like they carried through the game through these months as well as what other content could have at the time then on november 17th we got prismatic biocinerus i really love prismatic biocinerus's designs <laughs> the aquatic vibe yet again we see with this one the tails on them and can we just mention how cute the little creature is amongst all of the prismatic biocinerus's looking at them all and the different eyes that they have specifically on the yellow one <laughs> it's so unique a mutant like then on november 24th we got epic gobligod and the amount of personality what epic gobligod has inside of their animations just befits epic gobligod too well the way that the castle structure on their back really irritates gobligod i think is very funny indeed to watch inside of their animations and following up on that on december we got the year trailer on december 8th this trailer featured all of the things that we could expect throughout the rest of 2021 from the original game. I think this does show that the scheduling was quite a bit off towards the end of the year as there were only four days in the past three months of this year where we got content and I feel like that shouldn't really have been the case for the original game so I would have preferred for the schedule to have been better for the end of the year as I think fans really did experience that level of drought towards the end of the year. I think what didn't help towards the end of the year was the fact that they kept really releasing res and epics alongside content that was releasing at the time despite playground's effect on content that was being made for the game i think when magicals were releasing it made so much sense to release the variants alongside the magical because there was so much content at the time but when there was a drought of content and there was nothing releasing i think maybe it would have been a better pathway to have released the variants on separate occasions to kind of just spread out that content as i think it's absolutely insane to think about that content was only really released on four days in the last three months that is really insane when you're looking at previous months inside of the year it really did take quite a little downfall i would say especially on the schedule side of things i think it wasn't necessarily the fact that they didn't have that much to show they did still have content there i think it's just the schedule inside of things that maybe could have been a bit better towards the end but obviously too it was the content side of things as well as they were working on playgrounds a lot more towards the end of the year. The year trailer was certainly better than the Spooktacle trailer, however I do think it was missing the elements of charm that we've seen in previous trailers, as honestly it feels like we are going a bit back in time with these trailers at this point. However, I really loved when Kana revealed Epic Wobox, and that ties into what also released on December 8th, which is Cold Island Epic Wobox, and I have nothing but good things to share about Cold Island Epic Wobox. They are an absolutely remarkable addition to Cold Island. I love how they took the antlers of Plant Island Epic Wobox and made it a crown. They've shown that the designs with this one are just going to be so different amongst one another with the Epic Wobox's, and that excites me really immensely. But particularly with Cold Island Epic Wobox, I've got to say how much Epic Wobox has brought about the Cold Island song for me personally. On a personal level, Cold Island hasn't really resonated with me a lot, but I feel like Cold Island Epic Wobox brings a lot to Cold Island that wasn't there previously and has amounted the song to be something a lot superior than what it was before. I think Cold Island is certainly still not my favourite island out of the game. It's probably my least favourite but Cold Island Epic Wobox brings so much about to it and I love its design so much. The fact that it was a snow hut to the design 
I think is a remarkable idea. On December 8th, we received Epic Tring, which honestly looks a bit like it should have been an extravaganza, to be honest, but I absolutely love that it released here because that throws us off the bat, doesn't it? On December 8th, we also received Christmas costumes, which was nice to see all of the costumes throughout previous years that we've not seen for quite a while come back to inside of this event. And then on December 15th, we got Prismatic Bob, which was unfortunately a very rushed release, it seemed, out of all the Prismatics we've had. We've not had any issues alike to what we've had with Prismatic Bob. The yellow variant wasn't available in game at the time. It came a week and a bit later and orange Prismatic Bob's animation wasn't working in game. It was showing this rig thing with the white sprites that you couldn't see in game. So honestly, this seemed like a very rushed release, but I love Prismatic Bob's design. It is a very unique design and one of the highlights of the Prismatic designs out of the year. With their cute little mouth on their belly. And then at the very end of the year, we also saw the introduction of the Law Journals, which is a series which I am doing on the channel as of right now. This is a very momentous occasion for the channel as I've been working on the Law series for quite a while and I've been excited to share the aspects behind the Law which perhaps haven't been shared quite as publicly as perhaps what they should have been with you all. I'm excited to go into theories and everything in between with this series and I really advise you guys to go and check it out. Other than that though, that is the end of our year in review. Yet another year and another lovely year in Indeed, I think the end of the year certainly was a little lacklustre in comparison to the rest of the year, but that was a given given Playgrounds release. Going into April, July and everything really is what 2021 was, I do think. And despite the end of the year being a bit lacklustre on the content side and scheduling side of things, overall this truly has been the year of the monster and it's been an exceptional year. It's not my favourite year, I would put my favourite year being down to being 2000. 2020 being last year, but nevertheless a really good year for my singing monsters indeed If you enjoyed this video though, make sure to leave a like down below and make sure to subscribe too guys I will see you guys in next year's year in review video, but for now. Bye guys